Well, we're safely back after a long tour of Europe, 1,675 miles, and the snooper behaved faultlessly. In this second video, I'm going to show you some of the menus and some of the choices you get from within those menus. I'm going to turn it on by pressing this button. And the first thing you see is the opening screen. And there's a progress bar that runs along here that shows you that the operating system is being loaded. Once that's done, uh, you're given this uh, menu with eight choices. Let's look at the setting option from the main menu. When you press that, you go to a, a screen which has four tabs. The first tab says screen, the next one says sound, then brightness and version. The screen tab allows you to look at three things. The first option is to set up what you like to have as your starting menu. It can be the navigation menu, the main menu, or the last used menu. I keep mine on main menu. The next option is parking line. If you've got a reversing camera connected to the snooper, and you go into reverse, and so you end up seeing on the screen what's behind your outfit, then the parking line are some lines which are shown on the screen which help you judge uh, your uh, reversing action. The final option here is power control. and This basically dictates what you want to happen uh, when power is removed, uh, either at the 12 volt power or mains power, uh, whether the screen stays on all the time or it switches off after a given time. I leave mine on always. If we go to the sound tab, uh, you've now got four options here. The top one is volume, and the volume goes from 10 all the way down to zero. I like to have mine on the full blast because my hearing isn't very good. The next option is to do with touch sound. It's whether you want to have a confirmatory little noise when you press a button. And I like to have that on. Uh, because then it gives you some reassurance that when you've pressed the screen that it's registered it. The next option down is Smart Mix. If you're driving along listening to the DAB uh, radio and the machine wants to give you some instructions, then if Smart Mix is on, the radio volume, volume is reduced uh, so that the instructions can be heard more clearly. If Smart Mix is off, uh, then you'll get a mixture of both the radio and the instruction from the machine. It's not quite so easy to hear. And the final option is to do with the FM transmitter, which is inside the snooper. Now this is quite a clever device because what it does is it will transmit all the sound from this machine to your vehicle radio. And you can choose uh, what frequency it does that on, and it's an option here. And basically you find a free channel on your radio, and I've got mine set to 87.5 here and here. And then if I turn the volume up quite high and I press this, you can hear that's coming over the volume of the... Yeah, that's coming over my radio. So that's quite useful, uh, particularly if you want more output volume than the snooper itself can give you. The next option is brightness, and basically it allows you to set the brightness of the display all the way from zero, which is pretty awful, <laughs> all the way up to ten. And I like to have mine on the very brightest, uh, because then if you do go into uh, a, a bright patch of sunlight, you know there's a better chance that you'll be able to see uh, what's on the screen. And the final tab here is version. And this basically gives you all the technical information. It may not be relevant to you, but if you have to have a discussion with the snooper people with their technical helpline, uh, then it's some of this information they may ask you about. Now, if you put videos, music or photos onto an SD card, which you then plug into the snooper, uh, you can then uh, watch or listen uh, to them uh, on, on the device but I've got none that I can demonstrate, and it's not a function I, I particularly want to demonstrate on this video. Along the top here, there are a number of symbols and letters and numbers. Uh, the first symbol is the Bluetooth, and it's switched on, so it's showing up. The next one is a power source indicator, and uh, the machine is running uh, on external power, so it shows a, like a mains lead uh, symbol. Uh, otherwise, that would be a battery symbol. 
the next one shows that the FM is switched on, so sound is coming over the uh, radio uh, rather than over the speakers here. Uh, it shows you that there is an SD card in the device. It shows you that the speaker volume is up at 10 and it shows you that the time is 1.48 p.m. If we go to the navigation menu, the first thing that happens is that the machine goes through its uh, little warm-up process downloading the mapping data and there's a little warning thing which you get with all sat nav systems saying don't don't play with this whilst you're driving you know, get someone else to do it that type of thing and so here we are and we've gone straight into the map of where we are if I press the screen I now have the various menu options along the top here are three main tabs navigate to my favorites and configure the navigate to there are a variety of options find by city where you just know the name of a city, its country and uh, perhaps a street name, uh, find by postcode where you know the, uh, the country and the postcode, uh, your home and your office which you can make the, the device remember, recent routes and then you have some camping specific uh, options, the, the AXI database, the board atlas database, I'll move on to the next page, uh, the camper stop database, you can look at favourites, you can uh, program or look at multi-routes. Uh, these are routes which uh, have uh, multiple destinations along them uh, and it might be that you, you do your uh, tour of Holland uh, plan uh, and that might be uh, seven, eight or whatever campsites that you're going to visit in Holland uh, and this could be saved as a multi-route and you can save up to five separate multi-routes. Uh, you can access recent destinations you can access uh, uh, locations by points of interest, uh, you can find the nearest points of interest to where you are at a given time, and you can access points of interest which you have specified. And then uh, you can find locations from the map, uh, from a coordinate, uh, and uh, then you have a number of other options including uh, the traffic management computer option here. Your favourites include uh, the actual favourites you've saved, recent destinations and home and office which we've seen before. A configure option, uh, you can from here exit navigation completely and go back to uh, the main menu. Uh, you can specify details about your uh, motorhome or your caravan and car combination so that uh, the snooper knows how heavy you are, how long you are, how wide you are and how high you are. You can access brightness control and this includes functionality for uh, whether it knows uh, to switch between day and night or whether you want to uh, set it. Um, you can do the volume control, uh, you can change the language, obviously this is set to English for me. Uh, there's a setup function here where you can go through a variety of different things. For example, at the moment, the 2D, 3D uh, and North idea, you can either have the display showing you a 2D um, uh, d display of a map, like a paper map, a 3D view where you're travelling uh, through, uh, which I like, uh, travelling along, seeing a three-dimensional view, uh, and whether you want North at the top of the map all the time. Uh, next one is speed and time. Uh, you have the time displayed, the speed displayed, uh, 24 hour, 12 hour clock and so on, M miles and kilometres, uh, arrival remaining, whether you want the machine to display your arrival time or the remaining time, and you keep going down here, there are many more uh, text size for the map, uh, the icon used for your vehicle, uh, whether you want uh, lane guidance, and that's very, very useful, so it's always switched on for me, uh, junction numbering, do you want them, yes, I think it's a really super idea. Um, and uh, and so on. So that's all very, very useful. Um, next is a show. Now this really basically is what uh, points of interest or campsites might be displayed when you're using the map ordinarily when you're driving from A to B. Uh, under points of interest there are tons of them. There seems to be every different type of restaurant you could imagine. Uh, African, American, uh, Argentinian and so on. Uh, I've got 
almost all of them uh, aren't shown. I've got uh, uh, motorway service stations, petrol stations, hospitals uh, and campsites. That's all. So, and um, back to configure again. And there's another page here. Um, auto scale, it's a good idea as you get close to junctions so it goes to a finer scale. Um, uh, alerts about speed cameras, you can turn that on and off because uh, what, what you need to remember is that in France uh, you should not be warned of a speed camera alert. So you can turn this off completely. But I do like this one where you can be warned about schools. Uh, if you're driving along and you, you're near a school it will tell you. Um, so that's a sharp curve alert. That's really useful in your bit if you're a big vehicle or a, a, got a caravan behind you, knowing there's a sharp bend coming up. They're not always marked on the road, and so this is a good idea. Uh, and this just a general: uh, Do you want alerts to sound? Yes, I do. Um, do you want to see the GPS status? Uh, do you want to change the map color? Uh, playing around with the different types of keyboard uh, uh, options for your traffic management system. Uh, and then there's a couple of codes you can enter so that if someone steals this so they can't uh, then use it. Um, route timers and then you can also see the version number. Now I've got this Bluetooth telephone paired with the snooper and if I press the telephone option here and dial and I'm going to dial 789 because I know I'll get somebody there and you can see my phone is dialing 789 and there we go. I'll just end that call now. I now want to talk about the TV and the radio. But before I get those going, I'm going to pull out the antenna which is built into the back of the snooper. Now bear in mind that uh, on a campsite in England you're not likely to get the best of TV reception. And where I am it's not particularly good. Most people here are using satellites. But I've just pulled up this little antenna. Let's see what sort of signal we get. And this is tuned into ITV, and that seems to work pretty well. Let's just go through the procedure that you might use when you arrive at a campsite and you want to tune the TV and the radio into whatever channels are available at that site. I've put up the little telescopic antenna just here, and let's go to TV. And what I'm going to do now, bottom right hand side, settings. And there is a new uh, menu available here, and I just checked that I'm in the correct country, and it says UK, fine. And I'm now going to press the button on the left which says scan. And once I'm there, I say start. And it's now going to look at all of the available channels, and it's going to find what TV stations might be on those channels. And as it finds them, so it will display them here. And you'll see that in this area, channel 27, is where we have most of the TV and it's found 8 already and it's going to find a few more at channel 28 and we've got a total of 25 TV stations and 9 radio stations. That whole press process takes about 40 seconds. And that's the scan complete. We now press the little red arrow at the top here to go back and back once more and we're back at our channel selection screen. And you can now see the various channels uh, that are available. And there's quite a few. So let's have a look at this one, more four. If there's a, a problem with the signal strength, sometimes you'll see a little bit of breaking up. And that's the, the clue you need to uh, make you deploy uh, the uh, external antenna. And we now follow a similar process for radio. Press the DAB button. And this time there's no uh, settings option down here. You have to press this uh, little magnifying glass here to initiate a scan. That scan's uh, running now. It's going through all the various DAB frequencies. And then uh, it's now come up with a new list. So I'm going to see if I can find my favourite uh, BBC Radio 4. And there it is. I'm tuned back into Radio 4. 
Well, that concludes my two videos about the Snooper Ventura DB8500. It's a brilliant bit of kit. I really recommend it. Go and give it a try. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>